flying is supposed to be the safest way to travel. Safer than driving, safer than trains, but there is a risk in flying. The Air India crash in Ahmedabad was a painful reminder of that. But today, we are going to talk about another kind of risk in the skies that is becoming more pronounced. Just about a year earlier, Singapore Airlines Flight 321 hit extreme turbulence. The plane dropped 178 feet in seconds. One passenger died, 79 were injured. No storm clouds, no warning. However, scientists warn about one rising threat across routes that you and I fly. Turbulence. 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 Especially the invisible kind called clear air turbulence. Seven people were sent to the hospital. Eleven passengers got severely injured. The plane was met by emergency crews. One person has been killed. In fact, according to the International Civil Aviation Organization, almost 40% of all severe passenger injuries in 2023 came from turbulence alone. So, what's changing up there? And what is making flights bumpier and harder to predict? I am your host, Lavanya, and in this episode of The Climate Brief, we are asking a big question. Why are flights becoming more dangerous? Let's start with the fact. Data from the University of Reading shows that from 1979 to 2020, Severe turbulence increased by 55% over some of the busiest flight corridors in the world. The North Atlantic, the US, even parts of Asia. Moderate turbulence went up by 37% and light turbulence by 17%. We already talked about Singapore Airlines Flight 321, but it wasn't the only one. Closer home, just this year, 277 passengers on an Indigo flight from Delhi to Srinagar narrowly escaped disaster after the aircraft was battered by extreme turbulence and hail. Each jolt has a human cost. Between 2009 and 2023, the US National Transportation Safety Board logged 207 severe injuries from turbulence alone. Of these, 166 were crew and may not have even been seated. Korean Air says its turbulence incidents have more than doubled since 2019. Things got so bad that in 2024, they stopped serving hot noodles altogether after several passengers and crew were burnt mid-flight. And scientists warn this is only the beginning. Climate models project that if carbon dioxide levels double, the volume of severe turbulence could increase by nearly 150% worldwide. Imagine the seatbelt sign coming on not only a few times during a flight, but staying on constantly. Why exactly is this happening? What is it about climate change that's shaking up the skies? To understand that, we need to break down the science of turbulence. And hey, if you're finding this breakdown useful, hit subscribe to The Climate Brief. We bring you sharp human stories about how climate change is reshaping our world from the ground and now even in the skies. So what exactly is turbulence? At its core, it's just disturbed air. Irregular movement that jolts an aircraft. But not all turbulence is the same. Turbulence comes in three main forms. First, convective turbulence. This happens when your plane flies near big thunder clouds. These clouds have powerful upward winds that can push a plane up and down like a toy boat tossed on waves. Second, orographic turbulence. When winds hit mountain ranges, they're forced up and over creating swirling eddies on the other side. If you've flown near the Himalayas, you may have felt this. And third, the most mysterious, clear air turbulence or CAT. Here, there are no clouds, no storms, nothing that you can see outside the window. But high up at around 30,000 feet, there are fast-moving rivers of air called jet streams. Sometimes different layers of air in these streams move at different speeds or in different directions. That invisible clash makes the air churn and suddenly, your ride gets rough. Now here's where climate change comes in. A warmer atmosphere means more moisture. More heat plus more moisture equals stronger storms. Even a 1 degree rise in global temperature can boost lightning by about 12%. More violent storms means more convective turbulence. But the bigger change is with CAT. The jet stream is powered by the temperature difference between warm southern air and colder northern air. Climate change is making the temperature gradient sharper. And a sharper gradient fuels stronger, more unstable jet streams. Since CAT is invisible, even well-prepared expert pilots sometimes can't dodge it. 
and as the atmosphere keeps warming, both storm turbulence and CAT are projected to rise by as much as 150% if carbon dioxide levels double. So what does all this turbulence actually mean? For airlines, for crew and for you and me as passengers? Let's start with the economics. In the US alone, turbulence costs airlines between $150 and $500 million every year. A single 20-second encounter can add over 120 hours of stress to the aircraft structure. That means more wear and tear, higher maintenance costs and shorter lifespans for planes. And avoiding turbulence isn't cheap either. Pilots often reroute around storm zones, burning extra fuel and time. In 2019 alone, airlines collectively flew an extra million kilometers just to avoid turbulence. That burned about 19,000 tons of fuel, adding thousands of tons of carbon dioxide into the very atmosphere that's making turbulence worse in the first place. A vicious cycle. There's also the legal side. For decades, turbulence was brushed off as an act of God. But that is changing. As forecasting tech improves, airlines could be held liable if they don't use available tools to avoid known turbulence. Then there's the human toll. According to the International Civil Aviation Organization, in 2024, turbulence caused almost three quarters of all serious in-flight injuries. The global accident rate climbed to 2.56 per million departures, compared with 1.87 in 2023 even as the industry handled more than 37 million departures worldwide. Crew members are especially vulnerable, serving food or walking the aisles when this clear air turbulence strikes. Southwest Airlines now ends cabin service at 18,000 feet instead of 10,000 while landing to cut injuries. You already know the whole Korean air and hot noodles thing. And for passengers, beyond bruises and broken bones, turbulence fuels something harder to measure, fear. Anxiety about flying is rising and climate change may be the reason your next trip feels a little less safe. So this isn't just about spilled coffee or a bumpy ride. It's about safety, cost and the climate feedback loop that makes flying more unpredictable. And if the skies are already rough, what does the future look like? So the next time that seatbelt sign dings, remember, it's not just turbulence. It's climate change shaking the skies we thought were steady. I'd love to hear from you. Have you ever been through a flight that left you shaken? Drop your story in the comments. And if this breakdown gave you a new way to see flying, hit subscribe. At the Climate Brief, we'll keep unpacking how climate change is shaping the world around us.